VC Calculus students, it's time for 6-6, -6, and we got a basketball problem today. Now we're at school G every single grade, and that's the story of the evolution of Wade. BC Calculus, it's 6-6, -6, more related rates with respect to time. So we've got an NBA basketball, regulation size basketball, and the volume is going to be expanding at 2 cubic inches per second as you pump it up, so you're inserting air into the, the entire ball and it's blowing up. So the volume is changing at this rate. And then when you get a full NBA size basketball pumped up, it should hold 277 pi over two cubic inches exactly. All right, or pretty close to that since it's irrational. So this is a real life basketball here. How fast is the surface area, the leather that's around the surface stretching or increasing? What a great real life problem, right? And of course, there are lots of things in real life that are related rates. So. First thing you have to remember, I said it in 6-5, I'll say it again in 6-6. AP Calculus is not just an assessment of your calculus knowledge. It's an assessment over everything you ever learned. It's been building to this moment. You must know the volume of a sphere. 4 thirds pi r cubed, right? That's the volume of a sphere. And a basketball is roughly a sphere. Okay. Now, we are going to take the derivative of this function right here. But first, remember you make up your own equation, then you take the derivative? First, let's list our ingredients. What do we even have? Well, volume expanding, that's a verb. And then the per second is the other dead giveaway. So a verb or per second derivative. Volume prime. So I'm going to write V prime equals 2. All right? You don't have to put the cubic inches per second. Uh, also, that is a, a shortcut to writing dv dt, right? Because it's with respect to time, seconds, dt. Okay. Uh, also, when the basketball is full, it reaches this many cubic inches. Is that changing? No. That's not cubic inches per second. That's like a snapshot in time. That's just a how much, original function, volume, right? Volume is 277 over 2 pi. Okay? How much is always the original. How fast is always the derivative, right? That's a big deal in this class. And then finally, how fast, derivative, is the surface area increasing? Verb. Either the verb or the how fast should tip you off that we're looking for not surface area s, but s prime, or ds dt is what we're trying to find, all right? Okay, so I do see that one of our hints is V prime, so I know I have to get to V prime for sure. All right, volume of a sphere, 4 thirds pi r cubed. Whoever thought you'd be taking the derivative of the volume of a sphere, right? V prime equals 3 comes down to the front, the 3's cancel, cross cancel, and you get 4 pi r to the second times the chain rule of r the base. Pi is not part of the base. 4 thirds is not going to the third power either. Just r is the base. The derivative of r is r prime, or dr dt, right? t's are normal because dt's on the bottom, right? t's are normal, you never see any t's, and then everybody's implicit. Isn't that the theme? There's your volume prime. Okay, what do I have? v prime is two. Okay, uh, what else do I know? Oh, I don't know R, and I don't know R prime. Well, now we're in a pickle. All right, how am I supposed to figure out any of the rest of this information? Is there anything you haven't used yet? You haven't used this hint yet. Could we plug the volume into the original V and maybe figure out what the radius of the basketball is at that exact moment? Oh, that would let us get R. Okay, now we're on to something. Use all your hints, right? This is quite the puzzle today. So you're going to take volume, put it in for V. Let's do an aside over here. Somewhere on your paper out of the way. Okay, 277 over 2 pi goes for V equals 4 thirds pi R cubed is the original formula. All right, um, right off the bat, divide both sides by pi and they'll cancel each other out. 
gone. Multiply by the reciprocal of 4 thirds. Wouldn't that be 3 fourths? So 3 fourths times 277 over 2 equals R cubed. All right? Mr. Way, those are some crazy looking numbers. Well, guess what? I can't help it. It's a real life basketball. All right? I can't control the real life basketball and give you nice perfect cubes and everything like that. Is there any kind of cross cancellation? No. Three and two don't have anything in common. An even and an odd, well, that's not going to help us. All right? So we just go ahead and proceed. On the bottom, four times two is eight. Hey, at least that's a perfect cube. On the top, 3 times 277, it is okay for you to use a calculator. So I plugged it in, and I got 831. All right, great. Take the cube root of both sides. R equals the cube root of 831, which is definitely not one of our perfect cubes, over the cube root of 8, which we do know is 2. There is the radius of an NBA basketball at the exact moment that it is fully pumped. Now, what do we do with that number? We're going to take it and we're going to plug it back in over here for R. So you just have to find enough ingredients to pull this off. Cube root of 831 over 2 quantity squared, R prime. All right, let's make some sense out of this. All right, now we got some crazy stuff going on in here, right? By the way, cube root of 831 uh, over 2 is right about 4.7. Radius of an NBA basketball, about 4.7. That is correct. So real life stuff here. Now, how do you handle this when it goes crazy? All right, well, we're going to square this fraction. Square two, you get four on the bottom. That's easy. Now, you've probably never seen anything like this before. The cube root of 831 squared. How in the world do you want me to do that, Mr. Wade? There's not an exact cube root of 831. Write it as 831 to the, now you have done this before. Squared and simultaneously cube root, isn't that a two thirds power? Write it like that, it's easier to handle, okay? R prime on the side, all right? So that's where it comes in handy to know power root fraction, and then you can cancel the fours, okay? All right, get R prime by itself. Divide both sides by pi, times 831 to the 2 thirds. Weird, right? 2 over pi times 831 to the 2 thirds divides under. That's your radius prime. That's how fast the radius is blowing up as you put air into an NBA basketball. Small number, right? Very small number there. That's because it's not increasing by very much. You can, you can barely even see it when you look at a basketball being pumped up or a tire. You can barely even tell that it's changing. Very small number. Okay? Now, if they said, find how fast the radius is changing, if I had said that, you'd be done. But we do need one more step. How fast is the surface area stretching, increasing, find S prime? This was our question mark, right? Okay, let's hit this other board over here that's nice and clean for us. So we have to know the surface area of a sphere to even get to S prime. There's another formula you're supposed to know from a previous math class. The surface area of a sphere is 4 pi r squared. Kind of cool that it's four circles. Isn't each circle pi r squared? So you take four circles from the center of the basketball, copy it four times, put it all together, mold it into leather, and it's exactly the surface area. That's wild. Here's what's even crazier. When you learn the volume and the surface area back in probably integrated two and integrated three both, okay, you definitely did it in my class for sure. When you learn those, you don't even know what a derivative is back in uh, those old classes, right? Back in the integrated classes. Now you know what a derivative is. The surface area, now you'll never forget this for the rest of your life. The surface area is actually the derivative of the volume formula. The three comes down and cross cancels. Four pi r squared but not with respect to t, not an implicit derivative like we did earlier, but just a regular derivative with respect to r, dv dr. So if you just do like a regular derivative with respect to the radius, I did mention once before in my class that a derivative takes a three-dimensional thing and knocks it down to a two-dimensional thing. 
the derivative of the three-dimensional volume of a sphere is the two-dimensional surface area. And there's the square to prove that it's two-dimensional. Wow, how about that for cool, all right? So just the normal derivative and you won't forget surface area, okay? So that's a side note, really cool. Let's go back over here. I mean, students, when they see that, they love it. They're like, wow, Mr. Wade, this is crazy that that works. I know, right? Let's take the derivative to get to S prime. S prime, or ds dt, now we're back to dt's, is two times four is eight, pi r to the first. The chain rule of r in a related rates problem is dr dt, okay? But the secret way to memorize the formula is that it's with respect to r. Okay, now finally, or, or put r prime, because what have we put before? You can also call it r prime, right? Now shove in everything that we know and you should get S prime for your final answer. All right, eight pi. What's the radius? The radius was cube root of 831 over two. All right, matter of fact, you could write that as 831 to the one third if you wish over two. That might be better because our R prime is that crazy two over pi 831 to the two thirds. So this won't be too bad. All right, the pi's cross cancel, the two's cross cancel, and you end up with eight, and now how do we handle this? 831 to the one third over 831 to the two thirds. Remember, if you have the same base in math, you can cross cancel, same base, subtract the exponents. Do bigger minus smaller. Two thirds minus one third is one third, so it's 831 to the one-third, but where, top or bottom? Always where the stronger one was. Two-thirds beats one-third. 831 to the one-third, okay? And if you're confused on that, it is the same concept as when you cross-cancel x squared and x to the seventh. Let's say this is eight and this is like 13, okay? So remember, subtract between the two, same base. Subtract the powers, it's five, x to the fifth, x to the fifth upstairs or x to the fifth downstairs? x to the fifth downstairs because that's where the stronger one was, okay? So we just did that here. 831 instead of x, and then 1 third, 2 thirds, subtract, pull it to the stronger one. You can always easily do that. You cannot simplify that. That's it, that's your final answer right there. Now, if this is on the calculator section of the AP exam, which is very short, yeah, they want a decimal probably to match it up in the multiple choice, okay? And I'm curious as a cat anyway. It's about 0 0.851. Everything on the AP test is assumed to go to three decimal places nearest thousandth, okay? So it's about 851. If it's a non-calculator problem, leave it like this. If it's a free response question, leave it like this anyway and don't bother simplifying it because you're wasting time. They'll take either version. Why would you do an extra step on an FRQ, right? So here's your final answer today, but units, 0.851 what, right? What is this? Okay. It is surface area, two-dimensional, so we're talking about square inches, not cubic inches. It's also a prime, and the prime brings in the per second. And doesn't that just make sense? How fast is the surface area changing two-dimensional leather per time, per second, okay? So about 0.851 square inches per second if they want a decimal form. We'll just stop there, okay? Real life basketballs. All right, now let's go to letter B. Another classic problem that every calculus student does. It's the cylinder filled with water that's leaking. And so the cylinder's draining. This is getting lower and lower and lower. Water's leaking out of the bottom. Classic calculus problem. Everybody in A, B, and B, C, and college calc one and two, you all do it. Okay, so leaking, verb, right there. Derivative. Verb is always derivative. If you didn't notice that, the per second is kind of a dead giveaway. It's a derivative, but it's a special kind of derivative called a rate. It says the word rate in there, and there's also a per time. So that's another dead giveaway. All right, so what is this? It's 16 watts. It's cubic inches per second, all right? Cubic inches. Volume, three-dimensional, right? So that's how fast the volume of the water is changing. So let's make a little note to ourselves. V prime is 16, but wait a minute. 
it's leaking. It's the first time that we've had a negative verb in all of these real life word problems. So leaking, it's actually negative 16. The word leaking is negative. How about that for a twist, all right? So the volume is losing 16 cubic inches per second. All right, now what else do we know? The depth of the water is three inches for just one snapshot. For one instant, it will reach only three inches tall, the cylinder of water, not the overall cylinder, right? So we're only focusing on the cylinder of water. Okay, wait a minute. Depth, wouldn't that be like this? Three inches, right? Depth is basically the same thing as the height of the water. Let's call it H for height because that's actually gonna end up in our formula here. So the height of the water is three. How fast, derivative, is the depth dropping? Also derivative, verb, depth. Isn't that the H? That's the height of the water. How fast is the height of the water changing? We're looking for H prime. Always know what you're looking for, okay? Or DH, DT, right? All right, so V prime, H, go find H prime, write your own formula. The volume, we have to incorporate the volume of a cylinder somewhere. Ah, integrated three. The volume of a cylinder is just base times height. The base is a circle pi r squared stacked h tall. If your teacher didn't tell you that it was just base times height, they were missing out because that's really what it is. Okay, so volume of a cylinder, v equals pi r squared h, and then you take the derivative of both sides. This is all dt, right? It's dh dt secretly, so it's all with respect to time. I don't see t anywhere. That means v gets a v prime, r gets an r prime, h gets an h prime. Everything is implicit, right? But wait a minute, is there a shortcut here? Because I've got a variable times a variable, and so I'm gonna have to do ho d hi plus hi d ho with this r squared and this h right here. Do we really want to do that? I mean, you could, it works, but isn't there something that would save us some time? What did Mr. Wade say in an earlier lesson, right, about the sliding ladder and about the rocket, the space shuttle blasting off? If anything is permanent, plug it in now to save time. If anything is changing, you have to plug it in later. What about the height? Is the height of the water staying the same? Nope, it's changing, it's always changing. What about the volume of the water? Is that changing? Yes, that's changing. What about the radius? The radius of the water is going to stay two all the way down. That's the magic of a cylinder. It maintains the same radius, okay? So right now, I'm going to go ahead and plug in radius two for the R because the radius of the water will not change. Now the other backup plan was to do this. Once you got to the derivative with the product rule, which is a real pain here, you eventually could have established the fact that the radius is changing at zero, just like the sliding ladder's height was changing at zero. So the r prime equals zero, doesn't concern us. We just go up here, maybe clean it up a little before you take a derivative. So two squared is four. Let's put that in front of the pi as a coefficient. And you're ready to go. All right, derivative of v is implicit, it's v prime. <clears throat> four pi stays, and the derivative of h is h prime. It's just that simple. Real life water tower, real life uh, oil leaking out of some kind of tank, right? Uh, could be like the cylinders that are actually inside your car that make your car run. So all this real life stuff. It's actually pretty simple, right? So v prime, what's v prime? Uh, given negative 16. All right, equals four pi h prime. I don't know, isn't that what I'm trying to find? Divide both sides by four pi. H prime equals negative 16 over four pi, which will reduce to be negative four over pi. There we go. Why is H prime negative? Because the height of the water is dropping. Of course, it's decreasing, right? So of course it should be negative. But negative four over pi once, right? Well, isn't height one dimensional, it's just a string. It has a height, but it has no thickness. So one dimensional, 
So we're talking not cubic inches, not square inches, which would be the surface area, but just inches. But it's a prime, so it's per second. And of course, an engineer could do negative four divided by pi button and get a, a more accurate decimal. We just leave it like that and walk away. All right, we did it. Okay, now we go to example C. Every calculus student must do the draining cylinder. Every calculus student must do the draining cone as well. It's a little trickier than the cylinder, not much. I'll have to do a little integrated two refresher with you first. But we'll get that along the way. You got a snow cone. You go to the, the fair, right? And you, and you have these nice, delicious snow cones, and they're so tasty. I love those things. And then all the ice melts because it's hot. And then all of a sudden, you got a bunch of liquid, and it starts leaking out of the bottom of the cone, right? It happens. All right. So it's leaking at a rate of 0.5 cubic inches per second. All right? Leaking. Verb. Derivative. If you didn't catch that, rate. Definitely derivative. So this is obviously some kind of prime. What kind of prime is it? You've got a radius, you've got a height, you've got a volume. Well, it's cubic inches, which is three-dimensional, so clearly it's volume, right? So three-dimensional, volume, uh, per second or rate, derivative, also dv dt because it's a rate and it's per second, and leaking a negative verb, so technically negative 0.5. Okay, so that's how you throw in the negative and you also identify the fact that it is V prime or DVDT and nothing else. All right, what else do we know here? Oh, when the depth reaches six inches. Okay, so when this depth of all the, the leftover melted delicious juice that they put in your, your snow cone, when it gets down to six, okay. Isn't that a height of the little cone of water? So the height is six inches, okay? So we've got two clues right there. Okay, how fast is the depth dropping? Let's see, the depth is gonna be the height, but dropping, so prime. Also, how fast, prime, okay? Hopefully you're getting really fluent in English to calculus, calculus to English, right? Looking for the keywords, how fast derivative. Go find h prime. So h prime equals question mark. That's our question mark. All right, let's see if we can put it all together. First of all, integrated three. The volume of a cone is one third of a cylinder. And what was the cylinder? Pi r squared h. I hate this darn mark on the board right here. All right, so one third pi r squared h is that is not subtraction, is the volume of a cone. Archimedes, ah, another breakthrough by Archimedes. He discovered that three cones fit into a cylinder exactly. You'd have to mold them out of clay and kind of push them around and warp them a little bit. You couldn't keep them perfectly as a cone, but they actually make up. He was very proud of that discovery, by the way. It was, it was quite fascinating that he figured it out. Uh, he, he says that's one of his favorite discoveries, actually. I talked to him the other day. No, he, he said, allegedly, according to history, that it was one of his favorite discoveries. All right, now, we got that. Now, remember remember how to make this easier? Do you really want to do a product rule? You could, but I'd rather not. Okay, gem, if something is permanent, you can plug it in now. If something is changing, you have to wait. Wasn't the radius of the cylinder permanent all the way down? Ah, uh, but it doesn't happen in the cone does it okay when you when it's completely filled with liquid the radius of the liquid would be three inches but it's going to diminish as it drops down smaller and smaller so the radius is changing the heights changing the volumes changing everything's changing all right well I was hoping we could plug that in but wait if you say to yourself nothing is permanent which is true and you take the derivative of this with a product rule you're still gonna hit a big dead end. You're gonna say, why are there all these unknowns that I don't know, right? I got V's, R's, H's, V primes, R primes, H primes, and I only know two of them. You're gonna get stuck unless you get the integrated two breakthrough, all right? Most of this stuff is integrated three in pre-calculus, occasionally pre-calculus, really, quite honestly. Most of it's integrated three, occasionally it's integrated two. From the side view, the flat two-dimensional view of a 3D cone is just a triangle, 
okay? In the beginning, the radius is 3, and the height is 10. Now, as the liquid drains, you get smaller and smaller triangles of liquid. But I want you to think about this. This is something from integrated two that I taught when I taught integrated two called similar triangles, all right? Similar triangles, not congruent triangles, which are identical. Similar triangles are where you have the same ratio. Oh, you're only 50% as big as you used to be. You're only 30% of what you used to be. You're only 22% of what you used to be. Every triangle of snow cone liquid is similar to the larger one. For instance, eventually, wouldn't the radius get down to half of this? So we started at three, eventually the radius would get down to 1.5, and at that exact moment, the height 10 would be down to height five. You see, they go down together. So when you get half of the radius, you get half of the height. They are always the same ratio together. That is similar triangles from integrated two. And if you had an iffy integrated two teacher, well, let me show you the real deal then right here. Okay, radius goes to height as three goes to 10. It will keep a 3 tenths relationship all the way down. 1.5 out of five is also 3 tenths, okay? Every time this thing diminishes, the radius and height have this relationship right here. And that's called similar triangles. That might be brand new if you never got to see that in integrated two, okay? This is the only breakthrough that solves the cone problem. That's why it's a tricky problem. Okay, so if R over H equals 3 tenths, 3 over 10, you could multiply the H up to the other side and you could say, R equals 3 tenths H. The radius shall be 3 tenths of the height at all times. That's true, all right? Also, though, you could get the H by itself. Now, see, here's the question I'm going to ask you. Would you rather get H by itself or R by itself, all right? Um, it's okay to get R by itself. We could just square 3 tenths H when we plug it in here, okay? Because this relationship is permanent all the way down, so we could plug it in now. See that? All right, also you could cross multiply and you could do like 10R and 3H and then try to get the H by itself. I mean, it's, it's whatever you wanna do, okay? Now, I wouldn't be too scared that you have to take the 3 tenths H and you've gotta square it right here. I wouldn't let that scare me off and try to get H by itself instead because here's the deal. Here's why this is gonna be easier. If you change R's into H's and you get all H's into the problem, isn't the hint directly related to H, right? So we probably should be going to H world and not R world, all right? If you had cross multiplied and gotten 10R equals 3H and then divided both sides by three to get H alone, is H equal to 10R over three? Sure, yeah, I mean, that, that's, that's true. It's just kind of the opposite of this, but it's, it means the same thing. So could you replace H with 10R over three? Sure, but you're gonna convert the whole problem to our world, all right? You don't have any hints about the radius. Now there's a way to do it that way, but it's gonna cost you like five extra steps, so why would you do it? So here's where I want you to use some of your calculus and your mathematical instincts and say, if my hint contains H, I really wanna to try to write things in terms of H. If my hint contains radius, maybe I'll give you R equals two on the sample test or the test then I want to convert to all R's, so it just depends. Be flexible, okay? All right, so hopefully you understand the similar triangles thing because you, you either never learned it or you haven't seen it in a long time. So volume equals one-third pi, change R into three-tenths height quantity squared times H. If you don't do that step of similar triangles, you will never solve this problem. It is the only way, BC students. All right, now we're gonna clean this up before we take the derivative. One third pi square three, nine. Square 10, 100. Square h, h squared, times an extra h, h cubed, okay? Volume should always be three dimensional, so you, you have to have a power of three on your variables in there anyway. 
by the way, not many teachers show you this. R squared h to the first, two plus one is three, because you add powers. That is three dimensions. That does count, okay? If anybody's never shown you that before. All right, oh, we can cross cancel. Three and nine, let's put a three up here. And I believe we've gotten as far as we can go in the volume. We just need to get to volume prime to incorporate this hint right here. All right, let's try it. Let's put it back on this other board over here. Ta-da! All right, let's finish off today. V prime or DVDT equals coefficient stays. Derivative of h cubed, three comes down, h squared, chain rule of h, h prime. Everybody gets a prime, unless you see a t in there, which occasionally you will, not very often, okay? So everybody's implicit. No cross cancellation. So let's just call that three times three is nine, pi over 100. I'll just consolidate it to one fraction, how about that? h squared, h prime, v prime. Plug in the hints, you're done. What's V prime? Negative 0.5, ooh, don't like decimals. Let's plug in negative 1 half, okay? Nine pi over 100, do we know H or H prime? H is six, bingo. Six squared, 36. Oh, we can get H prime by itself. Piece of cake, this is back to middle school now, right? 36 and 100, let's see about the cross cancellation. They're both even, so two goes into both. Four goes into both. Six goes into 36, but not 100. Okay, four is your best bet. Four times 25 makes 100. Four quarters makes a dollar. Four times nine is 36. And you get negative one half equals nine times nine is 81 pi out of 25, H prime. Get H prime by itself, multiply both sides by the reciprocal. I've been training you how to do that for three years. H prime equals negative one half times the reciprocal 25 over 81 pi. Uh, two, uh, two and 25 don't cross cancel, too bad. So negative 25 over double 81 is 162 pi. As far as you can go. Units, H, height of the snow cone melt height is one dimensional so that is inches prime is per second you're done there you go and that's what i call bc chapter six money hold it now and that's what i call bc uh come on man bc chapter six money bc chapter six money <laughs> That's what I call BC Chapter 6. Dang it, BC Chapter 6. Doggone it, BC Chapter 6. BC Chapter 6. BC Chapter 6. BC Chapter 6. B chapter 6. Chapter 6. Chapter 6. Chapter 6. Guess what? And that's what I call six days. Come on. And the two on the bottom. Well, hey, guess what, dummy? Two's cross cancel. Negative 16 cubic feet per inch. What did I just say? Cubic feet per inch? That's not even a thing. All kinds of real life itch, uh, itch, 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 situations. You idiot. Shh. It's a bonus lesson. Click the link and you can find out how Mr. Wade used related rates from calculus to solve a real life problem in my own backyard. Click it. <laughs>